We are in the middle of Long Pond, getting some great solar. Going out for a swim. That's where we came from. That's where we'll portage out. And that's where we're camping. Oh my God. Doing great. I think the solar's gonna make it. Doing good. You doing good, Laura? Rocking. My eye's feeling better. Yay. I think it was a scratch, but it, it's, it's a bitch. Excuse me. Still a little blurry. Moon. We found some scat on the way to Long Pond Mountain, and Laura informs me that... It's probably from a coyote. And how do we know that? Because when we look at it, we see that it's slightly twisted, and we can remember the mnemonic, twisted anus canis. That's... Things in the dog family tend to have twisted, ropey scat. That's the most disgusting mnemonic, I think, ever. Now we're supposed to have uh, bells on our shoes and be carrying mace for bears. Bells keep you from scaring a mother bear, which is a bad thing to do for bears. Most bears are good unless you scare them. And the mace is a last ditch resort. The other thing you need to know when you're in the woods is how to tell bear scat from coyote scat, which we just learned about, how to tell coyote scat. Bear scat, on the other hand, is easy to distinguish from other scat because it has bells in it and smells like mace. It's a short hike, but it's definitely a sweat breaker, sweaty sweat hike. Oops. Almost there. Almost there, honey. Here we go. We, we made it. There's Long Pond, and that's the way we came. This is point number two after a wonderful nap on the second point. Camp over there somewhere. Hold on. We found a geocache, Laura. Don't worry. We'll Symbols. Things. Animal crackers. Love the view. It was a fun and lovely hike. Oh, this is from. A year ago. H. Yuck. Really old preparation H. How would you like to use that? There's the mountain we were on and the ducks below it you probably can't see. There's the mountain. So that's the key to balance. Is your shoulders have to stay aligned? Yay! You're on. This is a great time for a tree lesson. These are the leaves of a cedar tree. If you look 180 degrees behind where I am, well, past this big white pine to the tree that's behind it, we'll look at it later.
This is a great broadcast. What I was going to say is that you'll notice that the bark of cedar trees is kind of, it strips off in these long strips. That's one of its characteristics. Thank you. This is the rock on the beach of the perfect beach of the new campsite. There's our old campsite we found coming back from the hike. Right, Laura, above that hill is Shangri-La. Shangri-La. And the trash and food are intact. Yay! Picking up camp, going to Shangri-La Pines. Shangri-La. Shangri Lake, new campground, new campground. Small piece of rocks that embedded in my eye for the last 36 hours, but I'm not complaining. This is the new camp we're going to, that whole pine island point on the left there. This is the last camp we'll be at. It's an awesome point, 15 or 20 feet off the ground. All dry pine needles. Facing south, right there, with a the beach. Rock and roll. We just took a bath under that spruce tree with a rocky, sandy bottom, which we've been... Cedar? Cedar, I always say cedar. And um, it was an awesome Dr. Bronner's biodegradable soap uh, bath. And now Laura's going to read me Dune. What could be better? I'm trying to think of a good place to start. Wherever you are. Hmm. The friends of Jameis will approach, Stilgar said. Men moved behind Jessica, dropping a curtain across the opening. I guess they're in a cavern. Or something. Or somewhere. A single glow globe was lighted overhead far back in the cave. Its yellow glow picked out an inflowing of human figures. Jessica heard the rustling of the robes. Chani took a step away as though pulled by the light. Jessica bent close to Paul's ear, speaking in the family code. Follow their lead. Do as they do. It will be a simple ceremony to placate the shade of Janus. It will be more than that, Paul thought. And he felt a wrenching sensation within his awareness, as though he were trying to grasp something in motion and render it motionless. So maybe in life we all have a certain amount of force to exert, and we just exert it on different things according to preference or the gods. I, for example, tend to be very dainty about many things. I just had to shake the tent out of the tent bag, and I really hated doing that. But I seem to slam things like doors with what I think is a gentle flick of the wrist, forceful yet gentle, and often they slam. Or air conditioner vents. Apparently I, I sw swash them from side to side instead of holding on to the handle and moving them. You do attack my air conditioner vents. Actually yours too. <laughs> any any attacking vents. Or hapless I like that theory. Shim all that over. Tonight, I'm going to use birch bark in a whole nest of pine needles and sticks because I've always thought that this stuff is you find down here is so dry and has a lot of fuel. I want to experiment with putting it on the bottom of the fire while Laura sets up the tent. Good morning, Shangri Lake. It's Tuesday. My eye is still scratched, but it's not getting worse. And I flushed it. We're in this wonderful camp on this wonderful point, and we're about to uh, go swimming, I believe, and we're going to push through, I think, and wake up at 5 in the morning tomorrow to get the canoe back by open. Um, how you doing, Laura? Great. You're on video. We're very well rested. Okay, a solar report. I was losing ground. 
uh, with those cloudy days. And I took a couple flash shots, which take a lot of battery power. And I spent about 15 minutes with Laura reviewing the shots just to see if we could do a little editing in the field on solar. But now we have a beautiful sunny day, and this morning I got about two or three hours of charging. And um, I'm going to bring the solar charger on the canoe. And for right now, I've got this great spot uh, on the edge of the lake facing south. Right there. Dinner time. Look how small our food bag is, Laura. It's tiny. Yeah. We've eaten a lot of food. <laughs> this is a real grilled cheese and salmon sandwich. I have a spam and grilled cheese. Oh, look at that. On the fire. And that corner is where a chipmunk snuck up and ate our bread, which was about three feet from that tent while we're inside reading. We'd only been in for a little while. He snuck up. We'd seen him and said, oh, look, cute chipmunk over there. Isn't he so cute? But he's really, he's really conniving. This is a camp, um, camp monk. chipmunk who seems cute. And oh my God, we're so special. But he does this to every camper, doesn't he? Hi, little guy. Try to eat your bread. Testing, testing. So tomorrow we wake up at 5 a.m. 5.30. 5.30 a.m. and portage to Floodwood Pond. First we have to canoe for an hour. Right. Ah, wonderful trip, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can hear all those birds, but it's 5.30 in the morning, and there's a lot of them. Wow, it's, it's almost seven. We took uh, an hour and something to get out of camp, and all we had was a cliff bar. And we were thinking, this is why people who lived off the land couldn't get a job, because they had to spend all their time getting stuff ready and making camp. So, look packing at that. Packing shit up. Packing shit up. Look, the moon. There's the moon. And there's some fog. We're going to try to make it to stone. Uh... Stone? No. Floodwood. Floodwood. By 8.30. We've seen a lot of these one-person canoe kayaks that seem to be great for portaging and fishing. They're not quite a kayak. They look like they've been around before plastic was invented, actually. And I bet they're real easy to carry here. Found a sandy place to go swimming. Bye, loons. See you next year. Bye. This is our last beaver pond. 
planned how we've made it to the home base. Caleb is about to do his thing. He will now remove a canoe from atop his shoulders. How does he do it? Let's feel his shoulders and biceps. Thank you, Mascapade. Biceps, please. Shoulder. Oh. I love you, honey. <laughs>